All right, so this morning as we talk about the thing of the Holy Spirit, um, where do I start this from? Let's start from, um, let's start from 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. So, in this teaching, I will look at maybe two or three major things. The first thing will be this. We've been talking about the lean of the Holy Spirit, and someone says, Hey, excuse me, Pastor, how can I be sure? So, this is a question. Excuse me, Pastor, how can I be sure that the Holy Spirit is the one that is leading me? I hope it's not me. I hope it's not Satan. I hope it's not somebody else. So, how can I be sure that this is the Holy Spirit that is actually what? Leading me. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Because, you know, let me, also say, let me also say this quickly here. If you are afraid of getting it wrong, you will never learn. If you are afraid of getting it wrong, you will never learn. The way it is, and that's why I say about the leading. So this is the first caution to guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you're not used to spiritual guidance, don't exercise guidance in huge decisions first exercise guidance in small decision it's like when you were laying out to drive when you were laying out to drive you didn't take out the car the first day and go to Turbinham Bridge is that what you did no you were driving in between what your streets but as you got better you went to what a more busy street and as you got better you went to a huge place the same thing with the leading of the Holy Spirit the challenge is this most people are concerned about the Holy Spirit you know when they're concerned when they want to marry listen if the Holy Spirit has not led you in very simple decision and the only time you want to hear the voice of God is when you want to get married there's a high tendency you will hear the wrong thing because you're not used to it it's like it's like when you began to use viral to write do you know how much you used to cancel many of you cannot remember you used to cancel a lot because we're not used to viral you used to pencil you used to write and erase but when you were learning how to write, you said with a pencil because they know you make mistakes. As you got better, you move to what? A pen. So the same thing with the lean of the Holy Spirit. If you, you know the way it's going to work, so I don't want to be afraid and say, Oh my god, I missed it and I dumped it. No. Sometimes you have to miss it to know how God does not lead you. Glory to God. So first John chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says, Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try every spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So, well, I mean, the first underlining tone of this is this, is the fact that it's possible to have spiritual guidance that it's not from God. Satan actually provides guidance. As a matter of fact, in the, in the, in the Old Testament, you know, the kings are going to fight a battle. And the Bible says there were, there were some people that gathered together and began to prophesy that they will have victory, they will do well, they will have victory. Then one of the kings stepped back and said, okay, I've heard all what these people have said, but is there no other person that can prophesy? And the Bible says, well, there's this other guy that can prophesy, but he never prophesies good. He prophesies bad all the time. And he said, go and break him. And, and, and he told them, you know what, you're going to die in this battle. And he told them, he told them that, you know what, all those guys are prophesied. He said, a lying spirit has filled them. And that's why they're saying nonsense. He said, but you guys are going to perish in this battle. And, you know, the king said he didn't believe it, but he disguised. And that was Hayab. So is it possible? So how can we be sure that God is leading us? That, that's what I'm saying. How can we be sure that God is leading us? How can we be sure that how can hide the show so I, I, i've just said it the first way that um that it's possible to have guidance in different things how can i be sure that god is leading us how can i be sure that god is done? number one god's leading will not contradict the written word of god so john chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was what with god and the word was what no talk to me in John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was what the word and the word was what with God and the word was what God what what does that mean God and his word are one so there is no way you're going to have a leading of the Holy Spirit that is going to contradict the Bible because the word of God is the revealed will of God the word of God is what 
the review. So someone says to me, say, Pastor, the Lord spoke to me to marry a second wife. Listen to me. The Lord cannot speak to you marry a second wife. Even if you saw a vision, it was a demonic vision. The reason why is that when the Bible speaks about marriage, it says, therefore shall a man cleave unto his wife. One for what? One. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, and the two, not the three, not the four, not the five, and the two shall become what? One. So, the Lord cannot lead you to have a second wife. If you have a desire for a second wife, if you are not happy, that's something else. But don't put it on the Lord that the Lord has led you to have a second wife. So, how do I know? Someone says, well, I want to marry someone, but he's not born again, but God says, okay, to marry him. Listen, God cannot say it's okay to marry him. The reason why is that the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbeliever. Even if you saw a deep, even saw, sorry, an angel shining in darkness, that angel is a demon. This is the reason why, see, see this is the reason why Christianity goes funny on online. Because you see people do crazy things. I'm like, why do they stay and listen to this guy? Because what they say is impossible. People do things that we don't know. Someone said there's salt covenant. I say, are you serious? Are you kidding me? There's something called salt covenant. This, see, the pastors that do all those things, most of the time, their grandfathers are herbalists. So that herbalism affects their mind. So they now import it. So they are practicing, <laughs> you know what they're practicing? African Christianity. <laughs> Christianity meets with what traditionalism. They will practice it. You go to a church, they say, go and bath. Go and bath. What do you say in the Bible? You have a spiritual problem. It's water that washes it away. See, you have a spiritual problem. Spiritual problem means it's unseen. And it's water that will wash it away. Don't you think the person that is telling you and you they are listening, you people have revelation problems. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. So how do I know that God is leading me? Number one, God's leading is going to be in line with the Bible. God's leading is going to be in line with the Bible. The second thing is this. Um, Isaiah 55. God's leading is going to be in line with the Bible. I want to hurry because um, there's something I really want to show you. Isaiah 55. So these are the elementary things. Or foundational things, rather. The Bible says in verse 12, And you shall go out with joy and be led forth with what? He says, how will you be led? With peace. That's what the Bible says, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall garrison, shall mount guards around your soul. My goodness, he said the peace, my goodness, he said the peace of God, he said the peace of God that surpasses understanding. This peace is not logical. This peace is not attached to an event. This peace is not attached to a circumstance. This peace is not attached to an outcome. He said it's the peace of God that it surpasses. It's beyond understanding. It will mount something on you. Someone says, how do you know it will work out? I got peace. How, why do you have peace? This peace cannot be explained. It surpasses understanding. Someone says, you are in this business. How do you know it will work out? I have peace. Why? The peace of God that surpasses. It's not logical. How do you know you are led by God? You're going to have peace inside. And that peace is not the fact that... Um, when things look better, you have peace. When they don't look better, you don't have peace. This peace is devoid of natural situation and what? Circumstances. That's what the Bible says. is the peace of God that what surpasses understanding. That's what you see. When you see spiritual men, eh? they will say something and sometimes you think that they are proud. But the thing is that there's peace inside. And they understand that once peace is present, God is here. Don't you understand? Joseph was in Potiphar's house. Joseph did not complain. 
he entered prison he was so he was so full of joy he observed which of the prisoners is not full of joy because there was something working on the inside of him so how do i know god is leading me number one god's leading will be in line with what the word of god number two i'm going to have what peace number three god's leading is not going to bring me into confusion god's leading is not going to bring me into confusion and fear the bible says this that this is what the bible says the bible says um god is not the author of what confusion so god's leading it's not going to see god's leading is not going to bring me into confusion neither is god's leading going to bring me into fear so when you have a leading that brings you into confusion you know that that's not god at work that that's satan at work god's leading is not going to bring me into confusion someone says but can't you get god's leading and not be you, you, you don't understand it see you may not understand god's leading so you need more clarity but it does not throw you into what confusion confusion is a state where you don't know what to do no leading is meant to provide something for you to do it's meant to provide the guidance so if you are not clear you are not clear means watch this now if i'm going somewhere and i see a sign and i'm not clear what do i do i will reverse or stop to what read the sign again it's not clear not because god is speaking unclearly it's not clear because my attention to the sign is not as it should be watch this now god never speaks unclearly that's the first thing i want to tell you god never speaks unclearly but the reason why people hear unclear is this is the way they've trained themselves to hear and respond to god it's the way they've trained themselves to hear and respond to god hallelujah so let's go to first corinthians chapter 2 and this is why i will spend most of the time of the sermon today first corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 the bible says however or our birth we speak the wisdom of god so what is the wisdom of god so i'm gonna say wisdom is the application of knowledge well that's a limited definition of wisdom how does the bible define wisdom of god watch this now the bible says however we speak wisdom amongst them are perfect the word perfect there does not mean perfect the word perfect there means matured it means matured it says therefore we speak wisdom amongst them now matured how do you know that he said yet not the wisdom of this world so first of all this wisdom can be vocalized he said yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to enough but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery so this this wisdom is spoken in a coded way even the hidden wisdom which god ordained now, now it's confusing now it says this wisdom is ordained it's chosen i thought wisdom was application of knowledge that means wisdom is more than that hey it says which this wisdom which god ordained before the foundation of the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew wow so this wisdom is a kind of knowledge come on now because the bible says this wisdom is chosen now it says none of the princes of this world now when he said the prince of this world it refers to spiritual forces in the world he says which none of the princes of this world knew that means the wisdom it's it has knowledge in it because you have to know it glory to god all right because when we talk about the wisdom of god people have various ideologies of what the wisdom of god is the bible says for if they had known it that's the wisdom of god again if they had known it they would have not crucified the they would have not what crucified the lord of glory so the wisdom of god in this context refers to the plans of god that's what i'm showing you it refers to the plans of god the bible says this but this is not what i'm going to now this is what i'm going to oh Lord, this is very powerful just verse 8 is just very powerful the bible says which none of the princes of this world knew listen to me when he says princes of this world knew i hope you realize he's talking about satanic powers yes or no yes. you know what that means first of all because we watch a lot of home videos some of you don't know who satan is it's see home videos structure your mind 
on who Satan is. They say Satan has horn. It's not true. Satan cannot have horn. You know why? Satan has to look like Michael and who? Gabriel. The reason is this. They were created to have the same function. Angels. Remember that those that wrote home videos are not Christians. So when they write about spiritual things, they write about what they don't understand. When you now watch home video and now have prayer point as a Christian, you are walking in confusion. Because most of the write home video, think about it, are they born again? Some of them have not even read the Bible. It's what they hear as children that they put in their minds. Because you hear people say that, ah, Satan, ah, you know Satan is everywhere. Satan cannot be everywhere. Only one person is everywhere. Who is that person? God. See, if Satan is everywhere, we will not be, we will, God will not be om, omnipresent. Omnipresent means the one that is in every place, every time, at the same time. That's not Satan. So says, how can you prove Satan is not everywhere? If he's everywhere, in Job, when God asked him, where are you? He will not say, I'm going through and fro the earth. The, every time you read about Satan, he's on the move. God asked him in Job, he said, where are you? I'm going through and fro. Then the second time, the second time, first Peter says that, he says the devil's like, what? A roaring lion looking for good. He's going up and down. Satan doesn't know everything. That's what I'm going to. Satan doesn't know everything. The Bible says, if the princes of this world had known, because Satan is not that powerful as you think. He's a dummy. The things he knows, he learns from us. Glory to God. The advantage he has is that over time, because he has lived for such a long time, he now has, he understands the patterns, the behaviors of humans. But he's not that smart. See, he's just an angel. How smart are angels? Read the Bible. The Bible says we will teach angels. Hallelujah. If we, he's just like one of the people who will teach. Only a foolish fellow would think he can dethrone God. Why you are still thinking it's in our way? Praise the Lord. So, Satan doesn't know everything. Satan is not everywhere. That's what I'm going to. Satan doesn't know everything. Satan is not something. He can hear your thoughts. Satan cannot hear your thoughts. How can Satan hear your thoughts? Who is he? Just a fallen angel. As a matter of fact, we can have conversations that Satan does not know. How does Satan know things? Two ways. One, is either there spiritually when you are discussing so you can hear. Or two, you will tell someone that is under satanic influence. So because Satan has access to his spirit, he can hear. That was why when Jesus was always talking about his death and resurrection, he told only what? His disciples. And he always told them, don't tell anybody until I'm what? Risen from the dead. Because he knows that that's the only way Satan will know of the plan of God. That's why he always said those things. That's why he always said those things. He said, hey, so he, he controlled Satan by information management. He said, hey, don't talk. Hey, hey, don't talk. Don't let anybody know. Don't let anybody know. Why? Until I'm risen. Because the only way Satan, because Satan did not know about his death and resurrection. The only way we'll know is what? If he hears from somewhere. So you can control Satan by what you say. That's why some of you, be careful who you talk to. Someone say, hey, someone say hey, well, I don't want Satan to know. You will not tell the pastor. You will go and tell your friends. You have told someone. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's finish this. So the Bible says that, you know, so all these things are just in the Bible. The Bible says in verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known, you know, they, we believe a lot of funny things. People believe in man-made, that half human, half fish. Those are African demons. You don't understand. Outside the Bible, you cannot know the truth. Let it sink into your subconscious. Outside the Bible, you can't know the truth. 
They say, eh, there's half human and half. Where is it in the Bible? They say, the screen of the coast. Question, when did they discover this coast? When did you, the person start becoming queen? When Jesus was alive, was there a queen of the coast? Jesus never speak about the queen of the coast. When did you invent you? See, African can invent demons. Glory to God. I, I, I'm not sure if I showed you this in church one time. When someone says, we are going to the power of the air. We want to deal with the prince of the power of the air. Have I showed you that in church before? I've not showed you before. First Corinthians. The Bible says, we're going to the prince of the power of, of the air. And someone else says that, you see, demonic powers meet in the air. In fact, we have a lot of things we say. We say, number one, they meet at night. So one pastor told me, he said, that, that, that's, why, that's why I don't sleep. I say, I'm, I pray between 12 and 3 a.m. They are meeting time. I say, where do you know how they meet? Have you been a member before? Then sit, listen to yourself. If they meet 12 to 3 a.m. and you stay away to pray till 3 a.m., you forgot that's only night time in Nigeria. What about in America? What about in Australia? What about in Japan? They are meeting every time. Don't you realize that? And if they are meeting every time, what do they have to work? You know where we got these things from? All these stories of people that say they were witches and wizards. Listen to me. For you to be a witch and wizard, you're already deceived. You're what? Already deceived. So what you think is the truth is also what? Deception. But we love those kind of stories. Praise the Lord. I was a number two to Satan. Oh. I was like, yeah. We went with me to we'll go into this ocean and not fall our neck like this. I'm going, yeah. I'm like, oh. I told you something significant. You cannot know truth outside the Bible. Jesus said it. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm life. Will you please make a decision to stick to the Bible? When I was younger, every yellow girl was demon possessed. I don't know when that changed because it has changed now. Because pastors are not my yellow girls. Ask what that for me. <laughs> so this guy said the prince of the power of the air so there's a spirit have you heard that there's a spirit that's walking in the air come on now have you heard that before yes. that the spirit walking in the air where's that scripture first corinthians what is it um ephesians 2 rather ephesians 2 look at it ephesians 2 let, let me show you let me just that, let's digress 2 6 right let's no, 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 no. It's Ephesians 2. It's not Ephesians 6. You're talking about something else. Ephesians 2. What the Bible says is that their mind has been blinded. I think from verse 2. Give verse 2 or verse 4. So, somewhere around there. Praise the Lord. See, the Bible says this. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to what? The course of this world. Of course, this world means the worldly system. According to the prince of what? This is a prayer point. Brethren, we are going to pray against the prince of the power of the air. He's the spirit that moves in the air. In fact, when people are traveling in aeroplane, they will bind it. They say, we bind the prince of the power of the air. We subdue you in the name of Jesus Christ. What the, stop, talk, see, calm down. What does the prince of the power of the air mean? Watch this now. The word air in the Bible is used to describe the invisible. It doesn't mean air that we breathe. The word air, because air has invisible particles. It's just like spirits. Sometimes spirit might refer to a person. It might refer to just the invisible. How do I know that? Let's keep reading. See, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of the way, according to what? The prince of the power of what? The air. Where is he? Next line. The spirit that now walks. Where? Where is he located? In the air? In people. Don't you realize that demons that don't have bodies don't have expressions? So what 
are they doing in the air? They can't do anything. See, listen to me. Demons need human bodies to express themselves. The same way God needs human body to express himself. That's why when Jesus Christ cast out the demon from the man at Gadara, when they didn't find a human body to express himself in, what did they do? They asked him, they said, let's move into the pigs. Because they wanted the place to stay. They would rather stay in pigs. So can demons stay in animals? Of course they can. Because we have seen an example. We have seen an example. They can stay in animals. The Bible says, people now came to see the bad man. And next thing, <laughs> I want to show you something you didn't see in that scripture before. When people came to see the man that was healed, the demons left the animals and moved into them. So I say, hmm, is that in the Bible? I will tell you why. Because all of a sudden, with one accord, they chased just away. What were they under? What influence were they under? What influence were they under? How can you with one accord? Someone did you good and tell them to leave their region. The demon had entered them. See the Bible says, see what the Bible says. Where is the spirit? He's in the air. He said the spirit. So one, the prince of the power was metaphoric. He now explained in the next line. It's amazing because you take one line and leave the next line. The explanation is there. You just omit it. I say, hey, the prince of the power of the air. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> see what the Bible says. The spirit that now works. Not in everybody, in the children of disobedience, those that are not born again. The Bible is wonderful. Very simple. So next time I say, let's buy the prince of the power of the hair. You understand that what they're talking about. First Corinthians chapter two. Praise the Lord. I have five more minutes. All right. So the Bible says in verse 9, but as it is written, what the, what the Bible says now, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man. Did you see that now? Those are where you receive information. What? The things that God has what? Prepared for them that love him. That's why guidance is important. Why? Because if you don't know what is prepared for you, you cannot walk within them. I love the Bible. See, if you don't love the Bible, I, I, I feel bad for you. If you don't love the Bible, the Bible is awesome. This is why, see, just to realize that before I came, I was prepared for. Someone else, I will not get married. Are you drunk? Do, you see, the Bible says the things that God has prepared for them, hallelujah. Every single person must write down the scripture and go and meditate on it and pray with it. So when you pray, say, Father, give my husband, shut up. Say, Father, where is the prepared man? Where's the prepared woman? Maybe the reason why he has not come is that he's still in preparation. Because some food takes longer to prepare than some other food. Some people, and if you meet a man in an unprepared state, you will not like him. And the question, are you prepared also? So the Bible says this, see what the Bible says. For God had revealed them unto us by his spirit, and the spirit search all things, yea, the deep things of God. When the Bible says the spirit search all things, watch this now. Hey, hey, the spirit is searching all things, the deep things of God, okay? For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man that is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Watch what I'm saying. Hey, hey, this is what I'm saying to you. One. Your spirit, I've said this before, does not need guidance. Because guidance is what's in your spirit. So, it's because guidance is in your spirit, that's why your spirit is able to what? Search. Hallelujah. Let me give you a good example. Can you look for a phone you don't have? Talk to me now. Can you look for a phone you don't have? No. See, the reason why your spirit can search is because the plan of God and the guidance of God is in your spirit and because it's in your spirit, your spirit can search. So this brings me to the next point which is important. If guidance is not our spirit knowing something, how exactly are we led? 
where exactly are we led listen to me now recognizing spiritual guidance is in the mind that's what i'm going to that is why guidance is subject to misinterpretation the reason why is this because guidance is recognized in the mind that's what i'm going to spiritual guidance is recognized in the mind so watch this you can see something and say it's something else because you receive guidance and you interpret guidance through your mind why is this important when you understand that guidance is in the mind then it will help you realize the important parts your mind plays in guidance because your mind plays a major part in guidance. Let's finish reading this. The Bible says, What man knoweth the things of a man, verse 11, save the spirit of the man which is in him. Even though the things of God knoweth no man but the, Holy, but the spirit of God. See what this Bible says. But we have received the spirit, we have, so now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we may know. Watch this now. If the spirit brings knowledge, watch this, this is what I'm going to. If the spirit brings knowledge, the spirit cannot be looking for guidance. He says, we have received the spirit that we may know. So, the spirit has knowledge. So, how do we know? We know through what? Our mind. So, it is in our mind we are able to recognize the leading, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean to you? When your mind is not renewed, you will not be able to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm going to. When your mind is not renewed, when your mind is not updated with God's word, you will not be able to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit. The most, most of the problems we have with the leading of the Holy Spirit is from our minds. That's what I'm going to. Because your mind plays a key role in this thing. Most of the problems we have with the leading of the Holy Spirit is from the mind. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. See what the Bible says, verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but in the word which Holy Ghost teacheth. What's the next time? Comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual things. So, when you are unspiritual, you cannot compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Why am I saying this to you? Everybody look up here, please. When your mind is not properly trained in God's word, it will affect what you hear and how you hear. That's what I'm going to do. It will affect what you hear and how you hear. Some people really have a spectacular word from the Lord or a vision, but the way they interpret what they have heard is, the, is how their mind is working. So what do you do? If you want to hear the voice of God more, what do you do? The first thing is this. You need to train your mind with God's word. Some says, well, I don't know if God is speaking. So how can you enhance your hearing God? First of all, eh? if you are not used to hearing God in Bible study, you cannot know if it's him in real life. Somebody say hallelujah. Some says, how do you know God is speaking to you? The reason is this. When I read my Bible, there's a voice that interprets the Bible to me. True of us. That same voice is the voice that speaks to me. So, if I don't read my Bible, I don't hear that voice speak to me. So, outside Bible study, when that voice speaks, I cannot recognize. Because the Bible says it's the Holy Spirit that will guide us into all truth. It will interpret scriptures to you. That's why if I'm not attending HSTC, cell, all these Bible activities, I don't know if you can hear God. Because as I'm reading the Bible, you know, as I'm reading the Bible, don't even start talking to me. Explain to me, explain to me, explain to me. Watch this now. So, when I'm going in life, I hear that same voice. How do I know it's the Holy Ghost? Because I'm familiar with that voice from what? Bible study. But when I don't have Bible study, when he speaks to me, I'm not used to the voice. Is it not true? I'm not used to the voice. So how do I become more acquainted with the, with the lead of the Holy Spirit? In Bible study, as I'm studying, I'm learning. As I'm studying, I'm learning. As I'm studying, I'm learning. I'm hearing there is an interaction going on. My, fa my father never called me and said that. All I did is my voice. No. The more my father spoke to me, the more I knew his voice. So 
so much so that when he picks the phone to call me, and you know those days it was home home sets. When he picks the phone to call me, I say, Dad, because I know his voice. When you interact with God, God when you interact with God's word regularly, when there is no word there and he talks to you, you will be able to recognize it because you are familiar with the interaction in Bible study. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. What a simple way to know, the, to know the voice of God. What a simple way. So they have been struggling. Go for Bible study. Do more Bible study. Because listen, Satan cannot interpret the Bible to you. No. It is the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit. John says, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you into all truth. He will direct you. He will teach you. As a matter of fact, he's called a teacher. So listen. Oh my God. The, uh, the Holy Ghost is called what? The teacher. Let me shock you. Most of you here. Your favorite teacher in primary and secondary school, if they call you to today, you will remember their voice. Because there's a way a teacher talks that you like, that you will the voice will stay. When the Holy Ghost becomes your teacher, teaching you the word of God, you will know it's the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Let me shock you. If you went to my kind of secondary school, when your teacher is far away, you can tell it's far away. There's a way their shoes sound. You say, ah, Mrs. Conco is coming. Mrs. Conco is coming. Mrs. Conco is coming. You see, did you see her? No, no, no. I didn't see her. But I heard her shoes. How did you know? By, just by staying on her tutorials and lessons, you get to know her. When you spend time with the Word of God, you get to know the Holy Ghost. You can know the Holy Spirit outside the Word of God if you know him into little error. And the Bible says the Spirit and the Word. They are one. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So how do I so how, how am I sure? How am I sure it's God? By the word of God. By the word of God. Because once I become, how can I enhance my ability to hear the voice of God? The word of God. Bible study. Bible study. The more the more he speaks, I hear. The more he speaks, I hear. The more he speaks, I hear. When he speaks after the word, I'm accustomed with that word. Glory to God. I said glory to God. How else? How else can you hear the voice of God? Can you, be, can you improve your ability to hear the voice of God? Through a community of believers. I can't show you scriptures today. First Samuel chapter 10. Saul was a normal guy. When Saul got to where prophets were, ah, the spirit came upon Saul. All of a sudden, you saw Saul. Ha ha, ha ha. Talk, say the Lord. Talk, say the Lord. Talk, say the Lord. Saul began to prophesy. Ah, what's going on? Everybody said, Excuse me. He saw amongst the prophets. There's what I call contagious and corporate anointing. Contagious. And this anointing, eh, it happens in church, but it's stronger in cell. When you go to a cell that is prayerful, you become prayerful. I'm telling you. When you go to a cell that is filled with the spirit, you will feel the spirit. Because in that small circle, it's like fire. It spreads. It spreads. That's why don't just plan to come to church. Find the men's fellowship, join them. Women's fellowship, join them. It spreads. They looked at Saul. They said, Excuse me, please. Is Saul amongst the prophets? Because Saul was just a normal guy. He began to prophesy. But Saul was not amongst the prophet, but he was in prophetic company. Everybody around him was prophetic. Ah, when everybody around him is prophetic, you don't know where you start prophesying. You want to hear the voice of God? Stay with people that hear the voice of God. Well, there's someone that when you tell them, I heard God. Yeah? You heard God? Oh, wow. What's your identity? Oh, wow. You deserve some accolade. Oh, wow. Because to them, hearing God is such a big deal. But there are people when you say you hear because what did he say? You say he said this. You say, ah, as you said that, I just felt he also said this. You say, ah, how did you know? Because ah, they'll be adding to it for you. Praise God. As he said now, one brother brings a prophecy. And say, oh, glory to God. There's someone in this place you're going for. I just saw in my spirit you're going, you're going for a job. And the Lord has granted you victory. 
this week you're going for in a job of contract God has granted you victory praise God receive it in Jesus name receive it in Jesus name hallelujah receive it in Jesus name hallelujah I mean were you here on Tuesday did you see what happened as, as we were ministering all the people were just coming out God showed me this God showed me that God showed me they were not even pastors just church members everybody was telling us God showed them very powerful that's why if you don't come on Tuesday I don't know why you don't come people were prophesying up and down you want to grow you have this you hear God stay with those that have it stay with what those that have it look for a cell look for a department because my ability to hear God is not exercising service today. It's difficult. It's just a one thirty minute service. But when you stay in a community, you begin to hear. You see, you even ask question. Sorry, ma. How do you, how do you this thing you did, professor? How do you do it? You know, before I received the Holy Ghost, I used to think that the Holy Ghost would take your mouth and speak in tongues for you. I'm gonna refer that way. Oh wow! I thought the Holy Ghost would just take your mouth and just oh yeah. Because the background of the church, I, I had small exposure to speaking in tongues, and it was from white government churches. In white government churches, they speak in tongues in a different way. This is how they speak in tongues. You just hear, why, 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 The praise will be very intense. One man just go, yeah, rabbi, rabbi, rabbi. You know, they just go off. That, that's how they speak in tongues. So because of that understanding, I thought that when you want to speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost will just... I judge you. He's a kidnapper. <laughs> See, that's why most of you don't speak in tongues. You cannot just come to sense that people can just stop eating right now and just say, Man, tokolo roma sakapaya. He's like, ah, 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 ah. Pastor, I'm going to do so. Ah, just now, now. Ah, ah. After all the thing, we just finished abusing the president, the governor, we all this kind of thing. Next thing, the guy just says, Lekes Toglema, Kombla, Gaman, Koprat, and Bonga. He says, Ah! Because you believe. See, ask yourself, people that spoke in tongues, were they hijacked by the Holy Ghost? First Corinthians 14. Let me show you as I close. Let's, let's even deal with it. First Corinthians 14. Man, I love to explain things. See, I, I don't want to say my pastor said, write, write, write the scripture, I'll go and check. But when you say my pastor said, you'll be frozen. First Corinthians 14. See what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. He that what? Ah. He that the Holy Ghost forced. He that is a jacket. He that what? Ah. Go to verse 14. He said, he that speaketh. That means the speaking is his free will. Verse 14, please. 14, 14. Okay, let me just hurry with this. See what it says. For if I what? In what? He said, if I pray, it's me that makes the decision to pray. So he says, hmm. He says, if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. Next, next verse. Come on now, next verse. See, see next verse. He said, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will what? Pray with understanding. The same way I can pray in English and say, Heavenly Father. He said the same way I can pray in tongues and say, I can ex exercise will. See what it says. He says, I will. It's a function of my will. It's not an ejacking of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's not called an ejacking of the Holy Ghost. It's called praying in the Holy Ghost. Prayer must always be man initiated. Either in the spirit or what? In understanding. Let's pray.